conditions to be expected in various enclosed spaces, testing tank atmospheres, preparation for entering and working in a tank or enclosed space, preparation for emergency evacuation and conducting an evacuation, and general safe working practices. In discussing tank entry, we cannot cover every possible circumstance that might arise, nor can we cover the specific equipment you have on your ship. Your actions in any emergency must depend on the specific situation you encounter. We'll begin by discussing the various conditions that may be expected in enclosed spaces. During tank entry, personnel must be prepared for any condition that might exist in the enclosed space. Many potentially dangerous conditions may be encountered in a cargo tank. Of particular interest in this program are unsafe tank atmosphere conditions. These include the presence of hydrocarbon vapor, hydrogen sulfide, polar solvent vapor, and hydrogen as well as the condition of oxygen deficiency. Dirty cargo tanks will obviously contain some hydrocarbon vapor. The amount of hydrocarbon vapor will depend on the nature of the previous cargo. Cargo tanks which have been washed, ventilated, and determined to be gas-free may become gassy later due to vapor regeneration from residual oil or scale in the tanks. This is especially true if there is a rise in temperature or if any residue in the tanks has been disturbed. It should be emphasized that toxic conditions can exist even though vapor concentrations are well below the lower flammable limit. Threshold limit value, TLV, means the highest airborne concentration of a harmful substance to which a person may be exposed for eight hours per day for an indefinite period without danger to health. Benzene, for example, has TLV of 10 parts per million, or 0.001% by volume, and a lower flammable limit of 13,000 parts per million, or 1.3% by volume. A 1.3% benzene vapor concentration is extremely toxic. Crude oil, which contains more than six parts per million of hydrogen sulfide in solution, is referred to as sour crude. Hydrogen sulfide, which has TLV of 10 parts per million, is a highly flammable toxic gas with an unpleasant rotten egg odor in low concentrations. Cargo tanks which are washed after carrying polar solvents will have high concentrations of polar solvent vapor. This vapor can also be harmful. The TLV of tertiary butyl alcohol is 100 parts per million. But as differentiated from hydrocarbons, polar solvents readily mix with water. Much of this polar solvent vapor will mix with the wash water and be removed as the wash water is stripped from the tank. Cold water is adequate for cleaning tanks which have carried polar solvents and will help to reduce the amount of vapor generated by the washing. Hydrogen may be encountered in cargo tanks which are used for ballast. Hydrogen, with a TLV of 1,000 parts per million, is a highly flammable, non-toxic, odorless gas. Since hydrogen is lighter than air, it will not tend to accumulate at the bottom of tanks as long as the tanks are vented. Opening ballast tank lids will readily disperse residual hydrogen. Cargo tanks may be deficient in oxygen because inert gas has been used to replace the air. Also, if any empty tank has remained sealed for an extended time, the oxygen content of the tank atmosphere may be reduced. This is due to the oxidation process in which steel combines with oxygen from the air in the tank to form rust. Oxygen deficiency may also exist in tanks which are partially filled with water. 
In addition to cargo tanks, similar conditions may be encountered when entering segregated ballast tanks, double bottoms, cargo pump rooms, and other enclosed spaces. Like cargo tank atmosphere, the atmosphere in permanent water ballast, or PWB, or in segregated ballast tanks, may be deficient in oxygen or may contain hydrogen, toxic or flammable substances. Cargo may leak from cargo tanks into ballast tanks or other adjacent spaces by way of a common faulty bulkhead or pipeline running through the ballast tank. Therefore, it should never be assumed that permanent or segregated ballast tanks or double bottoms are free from hydrocarbon vapor or inert gas. It is impossible to prevent all leakage of oil from cargo pumps, lines and valves in a pump room. Therefore, the presence of hydrocarbon vapor in the pump room should always be expected whenever cargo is being handled. Pump rooms and other spaces may be deficient in oxygen if steam, carbon dioxide, Halon 1301, or inert gas has been used for firefighting or fire prevention. Newly painted pump rooms can also pose a safety hazard. The wet paint tends to absorb oxygen from the surrounding atmosphere as it dries. In other enclosed spaces, like forward or auxiliary pump rooms, deep tanks, peak tanks, double bottoms, coffer dams, domestic water tanks, in any void space which remains closed for long periods, an oxygen deficiency must always be expected. This will usually be caused by rusting of the steel in the compartment. Although this program focuses on safe entry into cargo tanks, the principles and practices we will discuss also apply to the safe entry into any space where unsafe conditions might exist. This concludes the section on the conditions to be expected in various enclosed spaces. Before we go any further, let's stop for a few minutes and work with what you have learned so far. When you hear the tone, please stop the program and open your cargo tank entry workbook to page one. This section of the program will cover the inspection of a tank to determine if the tank is safe for entry. No matter what the reason for entering a cargo tank, preparation is the key to a successful entry. Most tank entries will be safe if the tank is gas-free and remains so while you are inside. There is a program in this series that discusses the procedure for gas freeing in detail. One particular safeguard is to always have adequate ventilation while the tank is occupied. If the reason for entering the tank or enclosed space is for repair work, especially any hot work, then a marine chemist's certificate should be issued. At sea, the master can, after ensuring that the tank is gas-free, issue a company gas-free form. The marine chemist's inspection will determine whether the tank is safe for workers, but not safe for hot work, or is safe for workers and safe for hot work. Safe for workers, not safe for hot work means that the oxygen content of the atmosphere is at least 19.5%. Now, while a marine chemist certificate will be issued at this level, most companies require an oxygen content of 21% in the tank prior to entry. Check your company's procedure. This designation also means that the threshold limit values of the toxic materials in the tank atmosphere are within permissible concentrations and 
that the residues are not capable of producing toxic materials under existing atmospheric conditions, while the tank is maintained as directed on the marine chemist's certificate. The other designation that will allow the tank to be entered is safe for workers, safe for hot work, which means that all the preceding conditions must be met and in addition the concentration of flammable vapor in the atmosphere is below 10 percent of the lower flammable limit. However, vessel personnel shall use a reading of less than 1 percent on a combustible gas indicator. Additionally, this designation requires that the residues are not capable of producing a concentration higher than 10 percent LFL under existing atmospheric conditions in the presence of fire. And while the tank is maintained as directed on the marine chemist certificate. And finally, that all adjacent spaces containing or having contained flammable or combustible materials have been cleaned sufficiently to prevent the spread of fire or are satisfactorily inerted. In the case of adjacent fuel tanks or lube oil tanks, or engine room or fire room bilges, ensure that these spaces have been treated in accordance with the marine chemist's requirements. These designations are as defined by the National Fire Protection Association of the United States. A tank must be gas-free to be safe for men to enter. By gas-free, we mean having an oxygen content of 20.9% by volume. In practice, this is considered 21% as measured by an oxygen analyzer. Producing a reading on a combustible gas indicator of less than 1% of the lower flammable limit and having been found safe when tested with the appropriate toxic gas tester. In all cases concerning hot work, your company policy shall be followed. Some companies do not allow any hot work at sea. The conditions for safe entry are determined by first testing the tank atmosphere from outside the tank, then by an internal inspection and further atmosphere testing. The normal equipment for taking such measurements includes a portable oxygen analyzer which measures the content of the oxygen in the tank atmosphere. A combustible gas indicator which measures the hydrocarbon vapor content in the tank atmosphere and a toxicity tester which measures the amount of toxic vapor in the tank. Refer to the manufacturer's instructions to be sure you can calibrate and use each of the instruments correctly and that you follow the required operation and maintenance of the instrument. Additional information on this equipment is contained in the gas freeing program in this series. Other than performing the normal maintenance as recommended by the manufacturer, do not modify or attempt to repair any of these instruments. If a unit appears to be defective, use another one and have the defective unit serviced by a qualified person. The atmosphere of any enclosed space must be carefully tested at various levels and locations before the space is entered. You should, however, have some idea of what to expect in certain situations. For example, Cargo tanks can be expected to be deficient in oxygen if inert gas has been used to replace the air in the tanks. Also, sealed spaces will lose oxygen simply through oxidation. Cargo tanks may also be expected to have toxic and flammable levels of hydrogen sulfide as a result of carrying certain types of crude oil. Hazardous levels of hydrocarbon vapor are also likely to be found in cargo tanks. Even after tanks are emptied, the remaining sludge and residue will generate hydrocarbon vapor to harmful level, if not a flammable one. 
Other enclosed spaces, such as segregated ballast tanks, double bottoms, auxiliary pump rooms, deep tanks, peak tanks, coffer dams, and domestic water tanks, can all be expected to have at least oxygen-deficient atmospheres. And some may have toxic or flammable atmospheres as well. The most important step in safe tank entry is determining the nature of the atmosphere you are about to enter. This concludes the portion of the program on testing tank atmospheres. When you hear the tone, please stop the program and open your cargo tank entry workbook to page 6. This next section of the program will discuss preparations for entering and working in a tank or enclosed space. There are six basic steps to be followed in preparing to enter a tank. These are preparation of the tank, assembling necessary equipment, assembling an entry team, a pre-entry conference, testing the tank's atmosphere, obtaining the master's permission. Preparation of the tank is the process of gas freeing the tank. Once again, we refer you to the program on gas freeing. To review this process briefly, you should first purge the tank if the ship is equipped with inert gas, wash the tank, Purge the tank again, if necessary, and isolate it from the inert gas system, if fitted. But in all cases, isolate it from the venting system, the cargo lines, and the cargo heating system. Then ventilate the tank with fresh air until gas-free. Now you must assemble the necessary tank entry equipment, which must be brought to the entry point. This equipment includes three lifelines and harnesses, three breathing units, which can be any combination of self-contained breathing units or hose line breathing units that are supplied by large air cylinders on deck. Check to see that all bottles and cylinders are full. One oxygen resuscitator, which will remain on deck. One oxygen analyzer. One combustible gas indicator. One toxic gas indicator with appropriate detector tubes. Three intrinsically safe flashlights. Two intrinsically safe walkie-talkies. One tank or pump room evacuation rig, including line and a pulley. Hoist equipment. A tripod or davit, a single block with a tagline, and 250 feet, or 75 meters, of two-inch circumference line Dacron or equivalent, in satisfactory condition. And sufficient luminous materials, for example, light sticks, reflective armbands or vests, for each person entering the tank. All this equipment will remain on scene until all of the crew are safely out of the tank. Be sure you are familiar with the operation of each item. The next step is to assemble the entry team. Typically, a team would consist of five members. Regardless of the exact number of members, the following functions must be assigned. One person to be in charge of all actions on deck, including emergency procedures, if necessary. This person must be an officer. One person to enter the tank and test the atmosphere for oxygen, flammability, and toxicity. One person to stand by, equipped with a breathing unit and a flashlight. 
his only responsibility will be to assist the individual in the tank. This person will have no other duties until the crew member in the tank has returned to the safe area outside the tank. This standby person will keep the entry person in sight at all times, even if this means going part way into the tank. One person to tend the safety line attached to the entry person. And one person should be assigned for miscellaneous duties on deck under the direction of the officer in charge. Prior to entry, the team should have a pre-entry conference in which each member's role will be reviewed under emergency as well as normal conditions. The communication system will be reviewed. This includes operation of the walkie-talkies as well as safety line signals. Should radio communications fail, this is a typical pattern for line signals. One tug means everything is all right. Two tugs mean slack out more line. Three tugs mean take up line. Four or more tugs mean emergency, vacate the tank immediately. The general tank entry procedures, such as the sequences of steps and the objectives of the job, will be reviewed. Finally, conduct a review of the equipment that is necessary. The last step in preparing for tank entry is to test the tank atmosphere with a ventilation system off. This is to prevent any misleading readings that the operation of the fresh air supply may give. These tests shall be conducted at various levels through the deck tank hatch and through all the deck tank cleaning openings. If all instrument readings indicate a safe atmosphere, the tank test entry may begin. If not, entry shall not be attempted and gas freeing operations should be continued. Safe levels are as follows. 21% oxygen, less than 1% of the lower flammable limit, and the atmosphere is within permitted concentrations of toxic gas levels. At this point, the tank and the team are ready for a test entry. The next step is to advise the master and the bridge watch that an entry into an enclosed space is about to begin and that all safety precautions have been taken. The test entry consists of sending the designated team member into the tank wearing a safety harness with a line attached and wearing but not using a breathing unit. The person entering the tank will take a portable oxygen analyzer, preferably one with an alarm to indicate insufficient oxygen, a combustible gas indicator, and as appropriate, a toxicity tester. While inside, the entry person will monitor the atmosphere continually and will check the overall conditions of the area. During this time, the entry person will not leave the site of the watching standby member. When the tank has been satisfactorily tested and determined safe for entry, the ventilation system will be restarted and will be operated continuously while the tank is occupied. A tank inspected under these procedures and found safe for occupation can then be designated gas-free. Determining that an area is safe for hot work normally requires the expertise of a qualified marine chemist. Periodic testing of the tank atmosphere is essential while the tank is occupied. A restarting frequency based on the type of work being performed should be determined, but under no circumstances should the interval between tests be longer than two hours. Be sure that the ventilation system is operating at all times while the tank is occupied. Retesting the atmosphere is essential, especially if activities in the tank 
could change the tank atmosphere. This includes the opening of pipelines, stirring up muck or sludge, painting or cleaning. While the tank is occupied and other spaces on the vessel contain inert gas, an oxygen analyzer should be operating in the occupied space at all times. If the oxygen concentration decreases due to inert gas leakage, the alarm shall be given immediately. When the alarm is given, the space shall be evacuated immediately, and the space shall be retested prior to re-entry. While work is being done in the tank, the standby individual will have the responsibility of watching all the workers in the tank. That person shall not leave the access area while the tank is occupied. Should an emergency arise, he will sound the alarm and begin emergency procedures as planned. The standby person will not enter the tank in a rescue attempt until assistance arrives. Remember, prior to any entry into a tank or other enclosed space, the master of the vessel must be informed and his permission obtained. This concludes the section on preparation for tank entry. When you hear the tone, please stop the program and open your cargo tank entry workbook to page 13. This portion of the program will cover emergency evacuations. If proper tank entry procedures are followed, it should never be necessary to rescue someone who has been overcome by hydrocarbon or toxic vapors in the tank atmosphere. However, if a person should ever become immobilized in a tank, you should always assume the presence of toxic gas or a lack of oxygen and no rescue attempt should be made without the use of self-contained or hose-line breathing units. When sounding the alarm, give the essential details of the accident. Do not enter the tank under any circumstances until the emergency team has been assembled. Prior to any tank entry, the officer in charge will have designated a team for the rescue operation. While the procedures in a rescue situation will vary from case to case, the following basic steps apply. The objective is to affect the rescue in a safe and efficient manner. While it's important to rescue injured or unconscious personnel, to do so while risking additional lives is to be avoided. Rescue personnel will gather about the entry point the senior officer present will be in charge of the rescue. Do not enter the tank at this time. The officer in charge will assign rescue personnel to the following functions. Two members will enter the tank and rescue the injured person. They must know how to operate the combustible gas indicator, oxygen analyzer, toxic gas tester, and should have a knowledge of first aid. They will put on safety harnesses with lines attached and self-contained or hose-line breathing units and prepare for tank entry. A standby person, also wearing a breathing unit, will be ready to lend assistance if necessary. Three line tenders will tend the lines of the two rescue members in the tank and that of the standby person. Three miscellaneous duty people will assist as directed by the officer in charge. When the rescue team is ready to enter the tank, the following equipment will be lowered into the tank. A stretcher. A combustible gas indicator. An oxygen analyzer. A toxic gas tester. The combustible gas indicator, oxygen analyzer, and toxic gas tester may be carried into the tank by the rescue team. 
Then the two rescue members will enter the tank using the breathing units. The standby person equipped with a breathing unit will not enter the tank unless the two rescuers are in need of help. During the entry and when the rescue team reaches the bottom, one rescue member will test the atmosphere for hydrocarbon vapor, toxic gas, and oxygen. If the tank atmosphere is safe, the breathing units may not be necessary. However, testing must also be done in the general area of the victim before removing the breathing units. While this testing is being done, the other rescue member will determine if the victim requires any first aid prior to evacuation. Provide that first aid and then begin the evacuation. The victim is hoisted in the stretcher. Hoisting is done under the direction of the officer in charge and should be done by manual means. The use of a powered hoist is dangerous and not recommended. Once the victim is removed from the tank, first aid and any other medical treatment required should be administered. This concludes the section on emergency evacuation. When you hear the tone, please turn to page 20 in your cargo tank entry workbook. This final section of the program will discuss general safe work practices. When working in enclosed spaces, the following safe work practices should be adhered to. Post a warning sign in the cargo control room. For vessels without a cargo control room, post a warning at the cargo control location. Ventilating fans and portable blowers should be kept in operation until all work in the tank is completed. If work is discontinued for a period of two hours or longer, or if the officer in charge is replaced, the tank atmosphere must be retested before re-entry is permitted. Personnel should not carry tools into the tank. All tools shall be lowered into the tank by hand line or other suitable means. Only vapor or explosion proof lights and pneumatic equipment shall be used in tanks. When someone enters a cargo pump room, another individual should always remain at the top of the pump room to observe the person entering. Some companies use radio communications when entering pump rooms. Entry into a cargo tank or into any enclosed space is potentially dangerous. But if all the plans and precautions we have discussed are observed, those dangers can be minimized and the safety of the entry personnel ensured. This concludes the program on cargo tank entry. When you hear the tone, please stop the program and open your cargo tank entry workbook to page 25. Thank you.